Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan <laughs> Alright, we're coming in with this week's The Kings of Napa. This yeah, is my... the first season, episode four, Dear Wine, wine people. people. Before we get into this episode, just know on tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be the guests live on Lamont Tyson's channel. If you want to come on over there, have a good time with us. We're going to chop it up a little bit. We're going to be talking about why we decided to get into YouTube, some couples talk, and we're also going to talk power. Power, yes. So I would sweet. like to see y'all in the building. Yeah. And it is also posted on our community feed. We are going to post the link down below. See y'all tomorrow at 9 p.m. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get into tonight's episode. So tonight's episode really didn't give us a whole lot. It was building towards whatever is about to happen for these next few episodes. Yeah. So getting into what was going on. So we started to get a little bit of back to history about Dana. So back in 2010, obviously, Dana was up for this really good position at a company. You saw the two guys, the two Caucasian men, in there talking as they were getting ready to bring Dana in. Not knowing who Dana was, didn't know what Dana looked like. Other than the fact that he was a black man or black woman because of the name Dana. So he checked all of the boxes that we know that sometimes has to be checked for a minority to be for put diversity in, in the company. That part. Yeah. So when Dana walks in, not only is Dana checking mm. off all the marks, but Dana is also a little person. And they pretty much dismissed him right off, off the, the bat. bat. Yep. So we see where a lot of Dana's animosity is coming, coming from. from. Yeah. It came from an onset of already being rejected in this world that's not built for you. All right. So we see that him and his auntie Melanie are having this conversation about how the two of them have a lot in common. How they've always kind of been on an island to themselves. Like the people that are in the family, but not really in the family. Which really surprised me about right. Auntie Melanie because in, from the outside looking in, if you really want to think about how, how a lot of the dynamics are when you have siblings and one is lighter and one is darker, let's go ahead and talk about it. It's usually the darker one that doesn't feel yeah. as superior as the lighter one. That's so, so I really true. thought that it was interesting that they were right it in the opposite the direction. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I ain't even think about that. That's a good one. So, <clears throat> Auntie Melody, in my opinion, is using this as an opportunity to get closer to Dana because this is the only person she has an opportunity to really be close to at this time because everybody is mad at her for basically sleeping with Reginald. Like they should. Having a baby by Reginald. Like they should. The, her sister not only is mad about that, now she also knows that you were getting knocked Basically, you got knocked up on her sister-in-law's watch. Yeah. Who she had living in her house. Yep. And now it's what, a lot. And what pisses me off about Auntie Melanie and and you and we know this in the real world is that when you do something to people, they want to put a timeline on when you should get over it. Huh. So that's that you going and thinking that that witch call need to get over it and they need to move on. Like, nah. Mm -hmm. You've been messing with her husband for years. But you want her to, to forgive you and, and walk away with it in a few days? And I don't... Here's the thing. See, it's, it's a thing that we always say. It's like, it's bad enough when I know that something has happened. It's a whole nother thing when everybody Body knows, knows. Yeah. that something has happened. And not only did it, everybody know something happened, there is a physical being as a result yeah. of something happening here. Exactly. And Reginald is not here to pick up the pieces. Only the people that are a part of or the result of are there. It's a lot. So anyway, we see that Dana has an opportunity to be interviewed for this magazine. I'm, it may not be a magazine. It may be something else. But it's called Asset Man Makers. Yeah, Makers. Yeah, Makers. Asset Makers. In which the interview is going to happen at the home. A person is going to come in interview they're going to do a full spread they're going to do the interview they're going to do the pictures and the whole nine yards so basically we need the family yeah to be on their best behavior yeah. but here's the thing dana is not making it easy for anyone to cover for him nope. because he's being a dick to everybody everybody including yep. his wife 
at first I thought he had kind of got over it with her because we yeah. saw some interaction where they were like, but he was just playing. Playing a part. Yeah. <laughs> he mad with her. He don't want her to touch him. Mad with She's his mama. She's sexually frustrated because she yeah. was like, this rose god need needs 10. That's like, ooh, why? Why do I feel like I don't need to hear this? <laughs> like, I know he's a grown man, but I still don't. You got the visual. I do. You got I the do. visual. <laughs> so now they're sitting at the table and they're just chopping it up. And, oh, before we get to that, um, he pretty much checks Rose about the fact that I'm still really upset about the fact that you didn't have my back back there. Like, I have your back with everything. Yeah. When you wanted to do this, when you wanted to do a bed and breakfast, I had your back. And this, that, and third. Even when I knew it didn't make financial sense. I, and she was like, like, I didn't know we was keeping score. And he doubled down and he said, well, now you do. I was keeping score and I am keeping score. Rose, <laughs> leave him. Leave him immediately. Like Maya Angelou say, when someone shows you who they are, believe, believe them, them the, the first time. time. <laughs> That's so powerful. It is so powerful. So, but I but I don't think she's going to leave him because she, like she said last episode, that she wanted to be a PR person and she basically throw that dream away to follow, to follow him his dream so it's basically she's gonna have to trash all the work she's done and start over and, this, and start over and we know that's not easy no not at all yeah it's a lot easier to get started i mean it's a lot easier to keep going to keep going than, and then 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 to keep the restart yes sir. Yeah. <laughs> so we see at the dinner table right Everybody is sitting around and they're talking about this new wine because you know on last episode, August and the lady, I can't remember her name right now, but they won the vote for their wine to be the one that's going to be the one that's going to take the king empire up to higher heights, deeper depths. Yeah. So now they're trying to figure out how to market this wine and they need a name for the wine. So they go around the table and of course, Christian, good idea ratchet names yeah he said we need our wine to be in the hands of the rappers the strip clubs this that and the third so why don't you name it something that's powerful ratchet but identifiable right like black china they was like absolutely now, said we don't want no wine we can put in a red cup i said real facts <laughs> so then you know the auntie says something and i don't remember auntie yvette had said something and you know of course vanessa is pissed off with her so she uh -huh. told her you know what Go ahead and, and stick, stick to making to, weeds. To making weeds. She don't even do that well. Because last episode, she was talking about, we don't use synthetic hat. I said that again. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I know a synthetic weed when I see one. Hello, that's where we started from. Started from the bottom. Well, now we're here. Now we here. At the locks. At the locks, baby. Got tired of giving them all Come my good now. money. Come on now. So we see Bridget. Bridget starts at her new job over there, Sean and Sean. I said, y'all couldn't have come up with a more unique name than that. <laughs> but anyway, so she's walking around with the owners, and she's sensing that there's some tension brewing between the two of them. They're not talking about it, but they're speaking in code. Yeah. So eventually there came a time where one of them just had to step away, and she asked the other one, like, what the, what, what the hell is what's going, going on around on? here, Mike? He said, you know, we having some things going on <laughs> and whatnot. But eventually, he slipped up and told them, told her that they're also being extorted. I was like, what as the well. fuck? And then Bridget slips and says, y'all too? I said, Bridget, shut yeah. the fuck up. First of all, <laughs> you know, see, first of all, you black. You don't let nobody else know what's going on in the house. I know that's bad. I don't like when black people say it. But in this case, you don't let other people know what's going on in the black but, household. But for real, for real, though, before she had, before she had went to Sean and Sean and revealed that, I thought it was a target against the black wine uh, makers. I did, too. I thought until now, I thought they were trying to take them down until we found out they, that they messing with Sean and Sean, too. So it ain't about race. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we get back to the house because now you got Bridget's wheels kind of turning and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So let's go forward and just talk about Dana's photo shoot, interview, all that good the stuff. epic fail? Epic fail. <laughs> he tried to put on a great face. I mean, he's sitting in the chair like he's just the king of the world. And he has this interview, but he wants it all about him with uh -huh. the support of his family right yeah. there, but don't want to feature them. And the lady was like, 
there should be some fo photos of you and your wife and yeah, you and your, your mother. Yep. Oh no, I want to take photos with Ma. the lady that actually supports me, <laughs> who sees me for who I am, who's made me the man I am. Auntie Melanie? Really? Say the BS. Now, Vanessa is saying the same thing I'm saying. The only reason she's really doing this towards Dana is to get at, at me. me. Yep. And I felt like that too. Like yeah. I felt like she was putting 2110 as like this jab. Yeah. And she's turning the knife like, aha, uh -huh, I got your son under my... It was weird. Really weird, but black families, we can be weird sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it ended up, we we're in the middle of this interview and it just starts to all just fall apart because August is on her phone the entire time. Yep. Because of course, they're still trying to figure out Who's extorting his them. money and all this other stuff? So she's preoccupied. So they're asking, you know, the ladies asking different questions like, um, how was it being a, the only female in the King household? And she was like, well, I never felt like I was the only female. My cousin Bridget, who was more like a sister, <laughs> she, <laughs> she is, is she sister, is sister. Yeah. <laughs> was always around. Christian and Dana are kind of doing a little banter back and forth of who was better than who or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of got personal. Very personal. And then the, even the interviewer was like, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and Let's take, go take five. Five real quick. But when she took five, that still, camera was still, still rolling. rolling. And in the middle of all of the kerfuffle, as James Caldwell would say, all of the business of the King household was aired out. Yeah. But and the camera is rolling. But the the dagger was when Daniel said, I believe it was you, mama, is the one that's instorting us. I what? Because you're mad at dad Daddy. because he had a baby with Auntie Melanie and now but, we got a sister cousin. But I was like, Dana, she was being, he was being extorted before all this. Before all of this. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Dana, like, where did you even I thought this? she was going to smack the, smack the she, brakes off of that pimp she boy. She should have picked him up and just shook him like, let me have <laughs> said that to mama. Man. <laughs> oh. Law have mercy. God. So we get to a point where we have Bridget. Bridget comes over to the house. Um, Vanessa is not happy to see her at all. And Bridget said, pretty much, humble yourself. Uh huh. Check yourself. Because the only reason that I am here right now is to <laughs> save y'all. Yeah. Because I work over there at Sean and Sean. And they are having a poison problem over there at their vineyard. And they're being extorted as well. So y'all haven't had y'all stuff poisoned yet. But they're being extorted. What is going on? And all this good stuff. So we have the P.I. Quincy. Who, you know, is really security. Yeah. Quincy don't look into Otis. You know, we all had our, our own good Otis. And Otis has money. Yep. In an account that did not come from his paycheck. 50 grand. 50 grand. And an $80,000 book that he bought about three months ago. And what is the one thing that Sean and Sean and the, and Kings have in common? They have the common groundskeeper. Yep. Because we Otis. had no idea that Otis was working over there too. I said, well, how? When? Yep. When? <clears throat> and then also, you remember Dana and August was trying to keep it from Vanessa, mm -hmm. the mama, about being distorted. So when Bridget came in, and said that she was like, like what, are you what, what are you talking about? about being and it was like, so you you don't know that. So that's when they had to come clean about it. And yeah. then here's Dana. He's still trying to put it all on August. Like she was the one who masterminded and said, you know what, we're gonna keep this away from mama because she's gonna have a breakdown and all this good stuff. Yo, you was in on it too. Yeah. Then it all came out that Auntie Melody had a gun. Yep. That she gave yeah, the gun, gun to Bridget. Bridget and then went on. And Christian is like, wait a minute. Right. What do you mean? Say, why y'all ain't take me? I said, because you ain't. I say, I'm, I, I'm tired of y'all breastfeeding me. Because you need to be breastfed. <laughs> I mean, let's go ahead and keep it 100. What has Christian contributed that he, he might oh, be good for something like that? Yeah, he all about the drip, man. That's it. That's he about to drink. Melissa. <laughs> so fast forward when Ron a little bit. Um after the Kings are finished arguing, they are now aware 
that that camera was rolling mm. the entire time. So August is like, oh, ho, ho, hey, lady, 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 I'm going to need you to erase all of that. That last five minutes? Yeah. All that. She was like, well, you know, this is actually our property at this point, and we can do with it what we will, and this is going to be real hot. When we go ahead and air that out, and I said, oh, skit. I said, I know y'all ain't going to let her get out of that house. It, it, they let like, her like one of y'all women need to snatch her up and snatch that tape. <laughs> so fast forward a little bit, because we actually thought that was going to be a big banger in like the yeah. next episode or so, but it's not. Because Vanessa has some pull with some people that know some people, mm -hmm. and she ended up calling old girl's boss and telling the old girl's boss, listen, some skit happened at the house. She got it on tape. Can you do a favor for a friend? I, I'm phoning a friend right now. Friend, get that skitty race and keep my good name the way that it is. Keep our business and infidelities in this house. <laughs> and that friend said, boo-boo, I got you. And the tape just goes away. Yep. We hope. Because you never know. Yeah. Stuff never really disappears. Right. People just like to pull it out on you at the right time. But when that wine, that new wine get on the pad. Uh-huh. Then. Are you, oh, Bridget, you mean your your your, your husband's? No, daughter. Mm -hmm. That's when stuff like that comes out and whatnot. So what else are we going to talk about? Um, Calvin. Let's talk about Calvin. So you know August. Is has this love thing for Calvin, but she doesn't really know where Calvin is coming from. Yeah. When she first met him, he was still wearing his ring. He made up a, an excuse, said he wasn't really ready to date, so he kept his ring on. It's kind of like a deterrent. But she's also social media stalking his wife. wife well, yeah. wife. And she's <laughs> still taking recent pictures, and ring is a bling, a bling, bling. So... Given the benefit of the doubt, we were like, maybe she's doing what the same Christian thing he's doing. doing. Yeah, is that she's not really ready to publicly deal with the fact that they're getting a divorce, or, or she, it's or all she, BS, or she might think it's hope that she's gonna get her husband back, or it's all BS. So we see, um, we're gonna we're not doing this in order. <coughs> August goes over there, she talks to him, and she was like, "Listen, player, what are we doing?" Like, really, what are we doing? Because we don't been together before. So you want to take this slow, slow, slow. This ain't what I'm on. I know what you're working with. You know what I'm working with. Let's just go ahead. If we a girl and a guy thing, let's um, just go let's ahead go and, and do, do it. it. And he was like, first of all, let's go ahead and pump your brakes. I have a son who is priority to me because she was getting a little agitated because he kept texting his phone. And I was like, well, why would I would have did the same. Thing? I would have did the same thing. But why wouldn't he just say that? Yeah, just like, hold, give me a minute. I'm talking to my I'm son. I'm talking to my son. Because, like, why didn't she know he had a son? But any poodles. So, we ended up getting some back history on how her and Kelvin ended up the way that they are and how he's so close to the Kings. What had happened was they started dating in high school and whatnot, and Kelvin was in uh, at a foster home. I don't know if he was... I don't know how it went. But he was being abused. Yeah. And... August let her parents know about the abuse and whatnot, so they pulled some strings and got him removed from the home, got him placed into a really good home, and he was just able to flourish. They wanted to send him to college and do all these good things, and he said, I never wanted to feel like I was you using you all, right. so I wanted to find my own way, and he went to Howard. H-U, you know, so he went to Howard. <clears throat> Got a full ride, became the man that he is now, and he ended up finding someone else. So that is the history of how he but, ended up married and all that good stuff. But ain't that crazy, though, about him and the blessings that we've passed off because we didn't want nobody to think that we were using them? That's but, true. But at the same time, people don't open their mouth up to tell you they're going to do something if they think you're using them. But in That's our true. but in our mind be like, nah, I don't want to take it because I don't want them to think I'm trying to take advantage of them. Think of all the blessings. Cause I've been there, I'll be like, nah, I don't I'm good. But I wanna take it, but I'm good because I don't I'm the type of person I don't want you to give me something and then use it, you know, against me in the future. Right. Or keep score of what I did for you. So at the time when you want something from me, you remember you re when. Yeah, you remember when I did this for you. But that wasn't the reason why we 
made the exchange. Yeah, and and you brought up a good point. Sometimes mm. it's not even about, oh, I don't want to feel like I'm being a burden on you or using you. In exchange, I don't want to feel like charity. Yeah. I don't want to feel like your your token charity case. Yeah. Or your oh my your good deed for the year. Cause that's a horrible horrible feeling. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. I I grew up where I we needed but help that's, sometimes. But that's it's pride horrible. though. It's pride though. It really is a form of pride. It really is. Because now you're punishing, and I'm talking to myself. I'm talking right, to right. Me. You're pun you're punishing people who have good intentions for you. That really want to help you, but because you caught up on what somebody else did to you, now you making them pay for it. Yeah. Because when you don't accept from a giver, that kind of stifles them. It hurts them. Like me, if I want to give you something, you don't want to take it. it I, get, I get a little upset. Be like, wait a minute. So I'm I trying to be good to you for real. But I'm, no a, but I'm a hypocrite because I do that to other people. We've gotten much better. Yeah, we a little better. Because our friends, like our friend group is amazing. And we try to beat each other to the punch sometimes. If we're out eating, boom, I got it. grab the check. And we fight. It's almost like a race to who's going to grab the check. Yep. Because <laughs> we're, and it's not that you keep a score, but dog, when you going to let me pay? Yeah. We got a friend now. We've been friends for probably about six years. We ain't paid yet. Yeah. Because <laughs> his, his moves is so slick, slick. with it. Yeah. That you think you got him. Stanley was on his way to go pay it. Pay it, get a ticket. Hey, and he come. said, I got it. I got it. I said, we're going to get you one day. Yeah. If we got the cash app, <laughs> we're going to get you one day. But going for, for further into the storyline. So we see Christian, like my husband called him the King of Drip. The King of Drip actually does want to learn the mind. Yeah. And guess who's going to teach him the vines? Bridget. Bridget. Bridget said, you know what? I'm going to teach you everything you need to know because really at the end of the day, if Christian doesn't know the vines, no one out in the fields is going to respect him. And they don't. And that's another way that Otis was able to kind of keep him away. Yeah. Because <clears throat> nobody respects somebody that just comes out there to flex that I'm a king and what these grapes do. Shoot. they don't That that right there don't only happen at the, at the vineyards. That happened at they jobs. Don't. And don't don't let you get a promotion, or or the promotion is given to somebody on the outside when you've been doing a job all the time. Oh, Hello. <laughs> that part. But it's but it's kind of it's kind of weird that they didn't give it to Otis because mm -hmm. it seemed like he was the one that runs the crew. Maybe that's even why. though so even though Bridget was the one that was in charge, but it seemed like Otis was the one to keep the crew together. He did. So it's kind of funny that woman. so it's kind of funny that they, that they didn't promote him and gave it to Christian. So maybe maybe that's his gripe. What's the family? They think they, they thinking he's trying to poison the 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 uh the uh the grapes, but maybe it is, wait a minute, I've been doing this all for all these many years for y'all, and you're gonna send your unexperienced son out here, all he care about is drip. And looking good for yeah, the part. But I've been out here holding y'all down for all these years and you won't give it to maybe me. Maybe that's why he is stored no. Right. That could be Because he pissed. Yeah. I don't know. But then we finally see that Melody, Melanie, <clears throat> has a conversation with her sister, Vanessa. Which I am very shocked that Melody, even with this whole interview thing, is allowed in the house. Barely. I, I thought she was going to faint one time. What was going on with yeah, Melody? Yeah, when she was in Whatever. the sun. Yeah, that was, that was real weird. Like, you dehydrated or something? So Melody, Melanie lets her sister, Vanessa, know, listen... I've been jealous of you my entire life. You, you have always been the thin, good-looking one, and I have always been the chubby little sister that was known as Vanessa's sister. I admit I was jealous, jealous. of you, and I will also admit that I deeply cared for Reginald. I see you. Like, Why man, you apologizing? You gonna say that bullshit? Why is my hand so red? It's hot in this house. But anyway, I said, uh, yeah, like, like why would you say that? Why would you? Yeah, that, keep that, that to yourself. You already know she on fire because you, because. And yeah. now you're gonna admit that not only was you and her husband a fling, that you deeply cared for him. Mm -hmm. Come on now. In other words, what she was telling her was, I was in love. With your husband, yes. so she had to minimize it down just a little bit. Because if she said I was in love, 
I think Vanessa probably would. Pop, pop. Yeah. But here's where she threw salt on the wound. She let her know that I knew all about the extortion. I knew about what was going on. I knew about the money that was being um, pulled out of Reginald on a monthly <clears throat> basis. But he also was very scared for his family. Mm -hmm. He had a plan to escape the country. And Vanessa was like, whoa. No, he wasn't. He was not trying to escape. She was like, listen to me and listen to me good. He was going to escape the country with you and the kids. kids. Have you looked in his cigar box? So Vanessa was like, what are you talking about? She was like, trust me. Look in his cigar box, which would validate her story. Vanessa goes to the God doing cigar box and there is fake Passports, passports for the entire family. So now Vanessa knows that Melody ain't she's on no BS. She tell the truth. At least about that part. Truth. And not only that, it's really serious. Like it's not just about some money stuff. <clears throat> we are in some legit danger right now. Right. And which I which I'm real confused right now because we were talking off camera. It was right. like, what is the threat? I know like them poisoning the, the vineyard can destroy a harvest where they can't produce wine the way right. that they want. But what's the end? But that's but that's no reason for you to skip to the whole country yeah. for your life. Like your life, your life not being threatened. It's the vineyard. So I'm like, what does this person have yeah, on over you. them? Yeah, what 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 the heck is that? I, I don't I don't mm 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 mm. Yeah, so I I, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we know all of this is going on, this is when we found out that the PI, I told you out of order, but this is when the PI really let the family know that, A, it's got to be Otis. It's Otis. It's Otis. It has always been Otis. And Dana told August, listen, we need to call the police. And August is on her. If we don't know for sure, for sure, for sure, we're we not going to call, call no black, cops on no, no black, black man. man. <laughs> yeah. And I, feel I like felt her on that, though. Yeah, I felt her on yeah, that. Yeah, because what we're not going to do is put our brother and sister in and harm's way. For no reason. If yeah. we don't really know that it is him right. for real, for real. Right. Dana was like, listen, mm-mm, uh-uh, something ain't right. So he ended up going ahead and calling them out there. After after the Sean and Sean's crop got, got, got poisoned. poisoned. That's when he was like, we got to call. Which I said, that was, yeah, you right this time, Dana. So... We see the police come out there to the estate and got doing it. They went to question Otis and Otis took Tom off running, <laughs> got in the vehicle, tried to speed off and hit something. We rewinded back and I said, what the hell? He Say, what the hell did he hit? <laughs> Otis is in the hospital unconscious. They think he going to make it. But now they, they're for sure, for sure that guilty people don't run. Well, if you see police, most people run it. That's what I agree to see. I was like, um, you black, you see police, you you kind of... It's an instinct. You might not away. run full speed, but you try to stay clear. But, so, yeah, so I was like, maybe it might not be for that because he don't... Maybe he got warrants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he might be on the run. He might be a fugitive. Maybe he got a few weed plants out there in the vineyard. <laughs> he might got a few weed plants yeah. out there. And maybe they don't call that with him. Like yeah. They don't call the cops on me uh -huh. now. Because you know every time you plant one... Never mind. <laughs> you just think that every time a cop come by, that's what they come for that one week plan. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. But um, so August apologizes to Dana because all episode Dana has been on his BS, mad yeah. with the entire world, and she said, "You know what, Dana? I apologize. You you called the shots, and you protected us in my vision better than I even did." And thank you for that. So, of course, he feels like he's the king oh, of the world. Oh, he king now. Yeah, he chest out, stuck out. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm like, yeah, I did this. And so the family is sitting around and was like, thank you, Dana, for everything you've done. You've always been that dude. Just bigging him up. Mm -hmm. I said, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so then this is where the mom has a conversation with Dana, which, in my opinion, it didn't need to be said, but at the same time, if you it, hear that your parent wanted to abort you, maybe you, it you need to be You need an explanation on that. You need an explanation. Because without being said, we mm -hmm. kind of felt why she wanted to without even knowing the story. But she said, Dana, I never wanted you to hear that. I wanted to abort you, but it is true. Yeah. I wanted to abort you because when we saw your little body, we didn't want your life to be hard. Yeah. And we didn't want you to go through undue trouble in the world 
because you were little. Yeah, and I actually understood it because remember we used to watch that little show, people, big, big world, world, and they and they talk about all the health issues. Yes, and so the multiple it, surgeries, yeah. and so it ain't about him being a little person. It's about yeah, the health, the and, health, and their bones not growing right, and yeah. they having to have multiple surgeries and stuff like that. I hope he ain't had to go through any of that stuff yeah. in real life. In real but, life, yeah. But yeah, so I I felt that. Yeah, and so she was like, you know, after a while, we realized, no, no. We're going to create gonna yeah, you coming on in this world. A, a good place for you to grow <clears throat> up and you're going to be a strong king. And then she also said, you know that job interview and all that, that position that you were supposed to have? Your dad pulled you out of that. Not because he wanted you on the vineyard to keep you close. It's because we needed your brilliant mind here, here. Yeah. with us to mm -hmm. be what you are today. So he's like... <gasps> And I said, well, while you got that smirk on your face, let's go ahead and call the P.I. off on the stuff that you yeah, were gathering yeah. about your, your sister. sister. Yeah. Because you never said. And make it right with Rose, because her God needs to be attended to. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Like he said, yeah, 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 I don't want to hear that. Skin. <laughs> hear that? I'm sitting here like, oh, Lord, have mercy. So, um. What else I want to talk about this? Because the, the the end was like, whoa. Yeah. So I want to make sure I build up to that first. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just hit it. If I miss anything, we'll talk about it down in the comments. So we have Christian out there on the vines. And I said, oh, so he really is taking this thing seriously. Mm -hmm. Like his little life talks and little things with Bridget is doing it's, something. Yeah. So he comes out there, and you got the little guy that's out there was like, what you doing? Where, you, where your little notepad at? Your little cheat sheets? Like, what's going on? So Christian was like, bet. I got to go, go back up to the house and get my cheat sheet. So he comes in, and he was like, oh, cleaners doing their thug fizzle. You know, they don't cleaned up, rearranged, and whatnot. Stanley noticed that somebody's computer was up, so I was like, ooh, what he about to see? But yeah. That wasn't it. So he was like, you know what? Bridget probably took my notes and put them in her backpack. Bad. Why yeah. was Bridget's backpack still there? I don't know. Yeah. But goes in the backpack because he's looking for his notes. We see a drill. We see some other stuff. And then we see this white substance. And I yeah. said, wait a minute. I, I thought mean, it was I thought it was cocaine. I, I but was he like, said the name of it. I don't know what the name, but obviously he knew what it was. He said, what is Bridget doing, doing with this? this? So now are we trying to say that Bridget is the one out here I don't. I don't think so. I think that was planned. But at the same time, Stanley. Shaw and Shaw, their stuff ain't get poisoned until, until she, she showed up. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting extorted beforehand, but they ain't get poisoned until yeah, she got yeah, work. So she got, yeah, yeah. And she was the one that came over there real quick to let them know that they've been poisoned. But I don't know, but Bridget don't seem like she... She don't seem, seem like... Seem like, like her passion wouldn't allow her to... Destroy a vine. Yeah, especially not the stuff that she grew. But, but but she mad though. She but she didn't. hadn't always. They was being distorted before that. But did she know already? She could have known already that was her dad. And ain't nobody tell us your plan. Hmm. I, don't, I know. don't know what to believe, but I still believe in my heart of hearts that if Otis didn't physically do it, he worked with somebody that did it. Because why does he have an eighty thousand dollar boat? I'm gonna put this out here. I think Auntie Melanie is doing it. And I wouldn't doubt it. And the simple fact that she said she was jealous. And when you got that much jealousy and animosity in your heart, you also turn into a malicious person if you don't deal with it. So in other words, you will try to hurt the person that you're jealous of. Agreed. Yeah. What better way to destroy somebody than fuck with their money? And on that note, we're going to talk about it in the comments. Straight, straight from, from the VA. Turn it, turn it south. Two up. Two, Two down. down. Holla. Woo.